Now I was pretty determined to get this tractor into the shop and I wasn't about to let a little detail like the tractor not wanting to start slow me down. So I just hopped on the 2444, pushed this beast most of the way in, and then I started rolling it. Now interestingly enough, a lot of these old farm tractors actually roll really easily. They've got those nice big rear wheels that give you a lot of leverage, and the tires have cleats which give you a nice place to uh, rest your hands and, and to get a good grip on things. So once I had this tractor backed in against the back wall where I wanted to go, I dug through my scrap bin and I rummaged through some scrap material I actually just bought. And I started in the process of getting some of this metal cut up to make a stand which is essentially just going to support the front end of the tractor once we remove the wheels and the engine like we're going to in this episode. So the bolts I picked up this morning at the hardware store are a little bit on the long side, so I'm going to use a couple of washers here as a spacer, but I think we'll probably be alright. So this side piece faces this way, and this one faces the opposite way because I had a brain fart and I kind of got ahead of myself. And I was hoping that this would be a-okay, however, it's not going to be because uh, this means that this piece of the angle here is on that side of the angle there and vice versa on the other side, so it's not going to work. So what I'm going to have to do is uh, go ahead and remove this and drill a hole instead of here, drill another one here and use that one. I was afraid of that, but you know what? That's what happens when... You're not really thinking about things because you're pretty sure you have it down and that catches up to you pretty quick. Luckily this isn't the end of the world though. And as soon as I got that one last hole drilled, I got everything lined up, clamped up, tacked up, and I began the process of getting it welded out. Alright, so I jacked up the tractor and hopefully this design is starting to make sense. It really isn't rocket surgery. Essentially all this uh, basically kickstand has to do is hold up this part of the tractor right here and uh, keep it from rolling forward because, you know, if it's just the back wheels and this is just sitting on a pile of wood or something, there's really nothing to keep something from bumping the wheels and they go forward and then the whole tractor just boom, like that. All right, so let's talk about how this is set up real quick. Actually, first, I'm just going to take this gear shift here and pop it into reverse. Come on, get in there. doesn't want to go in reverse, so I'll put it in some other random gear. Just to move things around. Now it goes into reverse. Okay, so now it's sitting in reverse. And the way most tractors like this one are set up is you've got your clutch over here. That's this thing. And then, um, you know, you have a hand throttle instead of a gas pedal because when you get your tractor going the right speed, you know, you can just cruise for hours sometimes depending on what you're doing. And the way the brakes work is you actually have two different brake pedals here, one for each of the rear wheels. And the reason for that is because, well, right now they're locked together, but if I unlock them and I'm just cruising along, I get to the end of my row of corn or whatever, and I need to make a sharp right turn, I just spin the wheel all the way around and I stomp on this brake. That's got a lot of travel, it's more than the other tractor. Yeah, I just stomp on this brake and it locks up the, uh, the right wheel and the tractor just kind of pivots just like that on the wheel. Same thing for the left. And then obviously if you're going to be on the road or something or you're not using that capability, you can just lock them together like such. And then we're just going to press these all the way in and flip this little thing up and use that to set our parking brake. All right. So with the tractor secured in place, I began the process of removing the front end and the first thing to do is cut these nasty old rotten rubber hoses and remove the random radiator. So nobody actually knows what the random radiator is off of. It's like the guy said he thinks it's off like a Fiat or something. It was on this tractor when he got it and someone actually made up some really nice stainless steel brackets. Bolts rusted in place, wouldn't come off, but I was able to uh, pull the radiator out and I just used the Power Max 45 to melt off the, uh, the heads of those bolts. There was just one on each side, so I just hit those with the plasma cutter and then this whole bracket came loose.
So after breaking a mere two drill bits, I add the radiator and, I'm sorry, the random radiator and the random radiator stainless steel radiator brackets off of the tractor. And once I reach this point, I just busted out our Milwaukee Electric M18 cordless impact wrench and I use them to start busting loose decades worth of rust on these eight bolts which hold this front bolster to the frame rails and basically the plan for this build is we're gonna pop the front end off of this thing we're gonna pull the stock engine out and then we're going to extend these frame rails by about six or eight feet or so and then we're going to attempt to put things back together Alright YouTube, so what I was hoping for is that we'd be able to slide this entire front end just out the front of the frame, where, frame rails, because that's really just how it sits in here, you know, there's just four bolts on each side, and it's supposed to just slide right out, but obviously Aris doesn't want to do that, and I don't really want to force it, you know, I'm tempted to try and pull this with the truck or the other tractor or something, but I don't want to because I don't want to potentially, uh, you know, roll the back of the tractor forward and then this gives and the whole thing comes crashing down. So since we're gonna have to cut the frame rails on this thing anyway, we obviously have to modify them quite a bit to uh, extend them and fit the powertrain from that truck in this thing. I figure we might as well uh, cut them now and then once these are removed, then I can take this over there somewhere and then I can pry off this little bit at the front here. So our Hypertherm Power Max 45 made quick work of these frame rails despite the fact that they're a pretty heavy duty 4 inch channel and there's decades worth of rust and old paint and grease and oil all over these things. You know, Plasmark just cut straight through and then I was able to pop out that one section of the frame. I set that aside then I went over to the other side of the tractor and at this point there's really nothing holding on the front end so although it weighs probably about 300 pounds or so I'm guessing. I was able to just kind of pivot it, you know, by holding it from the end, and I laid it down on the ground, then I went and got the shop tractor, and I just came in with the lift on that thing, and I picked this thing up, and then we're just going to go ahead and take this thing and set it outside where it's going to sit until uh, a little bit later on in this build when we will need it again. Alright YouTube, we got to find something in the upper half of this engine. It's uh, sturdy enough to make something that attaches to it and we can lift the whole thing out of here by that something. I got some channel iron which I think and hope will work. Have a look at this old engine. Now believe it or not, this actually is something that I have mechanical experience with, you know, old tractor engines like this. And while this would probably appear to be a boatload of sludge, Y'all gotta remember this thing is out of, at latest, the early 1950s. And uh, honestly, I would run this engine and not think anything twice about it. I would put the valve cover back on, I'd figure out whatever that electrical gremlin was, and this engine will probably last another 100 years without needing any kind of attention whatsoever, assuming the rest of it is in the same condition as this, uh, this top end here. All right, YouTube, so full disclosure, I... This is on there. I have never removed this particular engine from a tractor like this before. However, I have removed a number of very similar tractor. I'm not in frame at all, am I? Don't think so. I have, however, removed a number of similar tractor engines from a number of similar tractors. And the way that we're gonna do this is probably gonna make these are on there, I'm getting the bigger ratchet. It is probably gonna make a lot of people who are actual mechanics and work on cars and motorcycles and that sort of thing cringe. However, I assure you what you're about to see is a very common industry standard practice if the industry is incompetent hacks working on antique tractors in their garages and other such spaces. And essentially what we're gonna do is we're going to unboltify these rocker arm deals here and then we're just gonna take a piece of channel iron and drill holes in it to correspond to where these studs are sticking up, where these bolts, I'm sorry, where the bolts go. And uh, then we're basically just gonna bolt the channel iron here. We're gonna attach that to probably the engine lift because I wanna be more uh, precise and subtle with this than the tractor, the other one's just like that. Uh, so yeah, we're just gonna lift up like such. So I will say that I 
wandered up to the house and I took a Gatorade break and a bathroom break and I came back into the shop and the smell of old tractor engine hit me like a ton of bricks and took me back to about 2008 or so when I first started messing around with these things. The channel was, uh, when I started it was non-existent, when I finished it was about a hundredth the size it is now. But maybe a few people remember the Alice Chalmers days. I messed around with some old uh, antique Alice Chalmers tractors. Never really did complete one because I was a completely broke about, I don't know, 14, 15 year old or so. And uh, in hindsight, I never really should have screwed with one. However, I do want, where's my half inch wrench? I do want to find one of those someday and fix it up properly because that is about the only thing in life I ever failed at. So at some point, we are gonna fix up an old Alice Chalmers tractor. We might put a V8 in it, we might just plain simple fix it up. Maybe some combination of both, maybe something entirely different. But that should be kind of fun. All right, so this is what we got to come up with. Now I've gone ahead and I've used my fancy machiner or tools to uh, come up with this sketch. Now I'm not friggin' Picasso and I know parts of my drawing look like parts of a cow, but just put that aside and try and stay with me. So we're gonna use some of our angle. I talked earlier about using channel, but the angle's quite a bit narrower and I have a boatload of it now. So we're gonna use a piece of that three inch channel and we're gonna make some uh, some doohickey things which are gonna get welded up in here, you know, like these things. Uh, basically, they're gonna be shafts which are gonna, gonna act like the rocker arm, so this bolt, you know, they'll take up about that much of it or so, hopefully, about two inches. And then um, they sit in here and the angle goes like that and then we lift from the head of the bolt. And what this does is it keeps everything from moving around and smashing into our valves and things along those lines. So essentially what we have to do is we have to fire up the lathe and we're gonna make some of these things. We're gonna make four of them. They're gonna be two inches long with approximately a 400 thousandths hole in the center. This thing is about 375 thousandths across, so I just want it a little bit larger than that. Once we have those turned out, we are going to go ahead and put these back in the lathe and we're going to turn down a 3 8 inch approximately section of that so they'll be kind of countersunk into our angle and we'll have a nice shoulder here which will rest on the back side of this angle and, uh, and we're going to turn it down to about 3 quarters of an inch because I happen to have a working 3 quarter inch high speed steel drill bit. So uh, let's see what happens.
works great personally. I know a lot of people have pulled engines like this just off of the two uh, valve cover studs. But I don't really want to do that because the studs aren't all that beefy and there's only two of them. And if we do this, which really isn't much more work, then we have twice as many attachment points. And I think these are slightly larger bolts too. So we got that. Um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. Really the only design change there was, was initially I made one of these things for each side and there's a little bit of a clearance issue here. So I just used one and stuck it in the middle, obviously. But we got that. Also, if I was going to make another one of these, I would have made this part here half an inch longer because I did have to throw a random nut in here uh, on each of these bolts just to take up that extra space. So anyway, now that that's in, let's just pop off the last of the bolts holding this engine in and set her down. Check it out YouTube, at long last the engine has been removed that was a little bit more complicated than I thought it would be because not only do you have to remove the visible bolts that you see you know around the front of that bell housing, but you have to remove the starter itself. And then there's one long bolt that's seriously like 8 inches long and it's just randomly next to the starter and that has to come out and then you have to reach through that microscopic little starter hole and fish out a fourth bolt around the starter. But once I got all those out of there, the engine pulled away no problems, and uh, I gotta tell you guys, I'm really pleased with how everything went in this build, and I guess we might as well start working on modifying some frame rails. 